What's up my Sanchi unit, it's the Central Man here, so this is my first AEW Dynamite review of the new year. This will be last week's show, because I haven't really solved this week's show yet. It will be broadcast uh, later tonight, I'll probably review it tomorrow on a Saturday. So, yeah, this is yeah AEW Dynamite, that will be the 1st of January 2020 um, uh, review. It'll be, yeah, the first AEW Dynamite show of the new year. This show was at the Daily Place in Jacksonville, Florida. The commentators for this show are Goodall, JR, Jim Ross, Excalibur. I'm guessing this is the debut appearance of Taz. The, the last time he appeared on an American wrestling promotion was basically TNA. That was, like, late 2014, early 2015. And I think after that, he took a bit of a break from wrestling. He did podcasts on his YouTube channel. Anyway, so the first match to kick off this week, uh, last week's Dynamite was Darby Allen taking on Cody Rhodes with Orn Anderson on Cody, uh, Cody's, uh, Cody's corner. I almost called him Coney, but it's Cody. So, um, yeah, this is the rematch from Fighter Fest from last summer. Yeah, this was a good, strong opener to kick off last week's Dynamite. Like, during this match, you had Darby kind of like working the shoulder of Cody. Like, he kind of like won one of the match. He had basically had Darby kind of like trip Cody onto the ring, onto the edge of the ring apron. He kind of like landed on his shoulder awkwardly. And then he kind of like you know, sent him through like the... In the middle part of the turnbuckle, he one moment he locked in like a reverse armbar. Like one moment of the match, he had Cody kind of like locked in the figure four leg lock onto Darby. Darby kind of reached the ropes. Uh, Darby at one moment of the match, he had basically hit a coffin drop onto Cody, onto the edge of the ring apron. That was cool. Uh, Cody hit like a refer he hit like a crossroads onto Darby Darby kicked out from that and then Cody hit the uh, like a I think he hit like a reverse suplex onto Darby and Darby kicked out from that after that and then Darby hit like a cold red onto Cody and Cody kick kick out from that and in the end Dar uh, Darby was about to do a second coffin drop and uh, Cody like reaches uh, really reaches it kind of Denied him, you know, he got his uh, knees up, hit hit him with a small package to to, to, secure, to, to secure the victory. And um, the first interview segment, you had this, I don't know what her name of the interviewer. She kind of like interviewing the tag team champions, Soul Cal and Sensor. That is uh, Frankie, Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky. And then, you know, talk about every tag team's going after the tag team champions, you know, the Lucha Brothers, the Private Party, and the Dark Order, you know, stick their nose, it doesn't belong. And then Scorpio Sky called them sp uh, spooky uh, perverts. And then you got uh, Sammy Guevara, you know, you know, gloating, basically he's age-shaming Daniels, like what you got besides wrinkles on your face. And then Cody, and basically Daniels challenged a Sammy to a match for ne uh, basically next week and actually it's last week but by the time this um, review will be recorded and then the funny part yeah Daniels kind of lick his thumb and swipe uh, Sammy's phone <laughs> and he, the funny part he's about to try to wipe uh, Sa uh, Daniels with spit off the phone with the interview's dress and the, the interviewer didn't allowed her allowed him to do that Anyway, um, the second match of the night, uh, not second match of the night, but the ma uh, the second match of last week's Dynamite, we've got a four-way match for the AEW Women's Championship. We've got the cha yeah the champion Riho defending the belt against Ikari Shida, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Nyla Rose. Th yeah, this is match of the night for me. Like, the, the start of the match, you had basically you had Nyla attack uh, Riho and Britt Baker. And then you had Ikara Shida hit Nyla with the kendo stick. Like, one moment of the match, you had basically, uh, I think it was Riho's hit, trying to hit a move on the top rope. He was, she was going for Nyla. Nyla got, got out of the way. It hit uh, Shida instead. Uh, 
Nyla kind of hit the uh, try to pl pull pulls out the table, put placed uh, Shida onto the table. She did a running uh, Santon on on out on the edge of the ring, on and put basically puts Shida through the table. She was about to get into the ring. Um, yeah, Riho did a double leg stomp onto Nyla back. She did it minutes later. I think it was on Shida or Nyla. Don't really remember a little bit. She did it. She did it. She tried. She almost going for the pin. Uh, uh, Britt Baker broke up the pin. She hit Rio with the um, a swinging net breaker. Rio kicked out from that. Then uh, Britt Baker put, tried to perform a. I think it was a lock jaw onto Nyla Rose, but she couldn't get it because Nyla is so big. You know she's like muscular. She's not really like, muscular, but she's look. She's got you know because she's bigger. I like. I think briefly like. Brick Baker trying to she performed like a arm bar onto Nyla. Nyla kinda like picked her up and slammed her. And Nyla kinda like um put trying to perform a I think it was a trying to perform a move on both Shida and Riho, but they got out of the way. Brick Baker hit the um try to uh, manage to try to perform the lockjaw onto Shida, but Rio broke it, brought them the hold, and yep. Yeah. And pin and really uh, performed this uh, glute bridge uh, roll up to score the victory to retain the title. After that, uh, Nyla got pissed off, attacked Riho, placed a t another table on her, and she performed a frog splash under the top rope and basically put her through the table. And that's it. And yeah, and, and and also she got the another title match next week. That will be um, yeah, Riho taking on Chris Sandler. Okay, and then we got a, and then we got a, a, a briefly segment with another interview. I don't know her, his name. He was about to interview uh, Joey Janela, but he got low blowed by Penelope Ford. That's Kip Saban's uh, girlfriend. Okay, and then we got the third match. We got uh, Trent Barretta, one half of the best friends, versus John Moxley. This match was it to me. It wasn't like a bad match. It was a good match. It was nothing like special. Like one moment of the match, you had a uh, Kip Saban, not Kip Saban, uh, uh, Orange Cassidy. You know, did that like uh, a sh a face off between him and um, John Moxley with both their hands in their pockets. That was kind of stupid. And then you had a uh, Trent hit the uh, running knee onto um, Moxley. Moxley kick out from that. In the end, Moxley hit the I think it was the Pyramid shift onto a. Uh, Trent to score the victory, then you got Sammy Guevara came through the crowd, he was wearing like this 2020 glasses, blowing a party pop popper, and then you got like Jericho on the screen, he was outside the building, basically he wants him to equal lead the inner circle, you know, becoming, he wants him to become the, was it, the, the, ex the vice president of the group. And you know they after offering uh, uh Moxley the car. It was a Ford GTX. Jericho said it's the best sports car in America. And um, let's see, he basically pointed over Moxley like you're the premier, you're the premier wrestler in the world. To us, we can shove our fist into Cody's throat and re reach reach his um pink tie off off his ass and tied out tied the young bucks like a Christmas present bow. And beat and beat her Kenny Omega up so badly he'll be embarrassed and stupid like the people from Jacksonville, Florida. That's Jericho says. And Jericho like ride off with the sports car. And then Moxley on the mic says, you know, we'll be. I'll give my decision at the end. Really, next week's uh, Dynamite. And then we got the next match. We got uh, yeah, Sammy Guevara taking on. Dustin Rhodes, you know, Dustin Rhodes came out of nowhere, cowardly cheap shard Sammy Guevara, like one moment of the match you got Jake Hager, uh, you know, he's basically the enforcer of the group, and read the height difference between Dustin and Hager, they're both the same height, 6'6", six, six. like one more, yeah, he had like, like Guevara hit like a spring, uh, springboard uh, moonsault onto the top rope, onto Dustin Rhodes, that was sick. Like some moments of the match, you had the referee stopping Dustin Rhodes. Like one moment, like Dustin had the the chair, he was about to hit uh, Guevara with the chair. 
um, but instead the referee stopped him. He was about to do a low blow onto the corner, one side of the corner. The referee stopped him from that. And then after, in, in, during uh, Sammy's uh, trying to eat, while grabbing the, uh, grabbing the, um, the referee, Haga cheap shot to uh, Dustin Rhodes. Guevara pinned um, Dustin Rhodes to, to score the victory. You know, it's good for Sammy. You know, he's young. You know, like, starting to like him a little bit. He's a bit annoying, but I find him funny. You know, I still like the uh, inner circle. So, and then we got like a segment with the private party. You had the interviewer interviewing the private party in this type of cocktail bar. You had Adam Hangman Page. He's pouring like a, what's it, a glass of whiskey? I think it's whiskey. And he got pissed off because one of the private party members took his drink and said, you worry, I'm not worried about you. And then and Adam Page says, you worry about me? You worry, you worry about me? I'm going to kick your ass. Happy New Year's. And he walked, he walked off and took his uh, whiskey drink with him. Because the private party kind of took his drink. Then we got like an interview segment with Maxwell Jacob Freeman with his uh, bodyguard Warlord. And he's basically shitting on the fans like Cole, Cody's fans, Mark fans. Like you got your head so far up your ass you can see shit. And he also talked about the, sp uh, the, the, spe the speculations like number one. Like about if you hit, if, if Cody hit him. He will never have that match in, at Revolution or ever. Number two, uh, MGF wants to choose Cody's opponent for him, and then his opponent for him is his bodyguard Warlord, or War, whatever his name is. And number three, you know, uh, I will whip you not once, not twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times, ten times. That's he says. In the end, he had to kind of kiss his uh, ring. And that's the end of the segment. Um, see, so I'm, I'm so you know, so it was really good promo. I'm looking forward to that feud between Cody, not feud, but the match between Cody and uh, NGF. I think it's good because they because NGF betrayed him at full gear. Um, so it's look at you know I I think it's you know like anyway. Well, I'm trying to think. It's been, uh, I, saw it, I saw it just today. Anyway, so, anyway, uh, we got, like, an interview segment with the, was it, the Dresda Express, you know, uh, Jungle Boy, Marco Stunt, and Luchasaurus. The funny part, you had Marco Stunt's about to hug the referee, uh, not referee, but the, um, the interviewer, and uh, Luchasaurus stopped him. I thought it was a little bit funny. And like one moment, the uh, one moment, the um, one moment, like you had briefly you had uh, Adam Page on joining the the commentary team. I think that was for the main event. And then you got like an interviewer interviewing uh, Riho with Michael Nakasari as a translator, and you had Britt Baker kind of confronting Riho. I'm being there every single week. You just showing showing up what, what where what, whatever you want. You can tell she's kind of. I'm guessing like Britt Baker is gonna turn heel. Um, here's the one, before we get to the main event, um, I'm, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on Riho as the AEW Women's Champion. I think she's a good champion. I think the one thing she's holding her back is her language barrier because she, did, she, should, she didn't really speak a lot of English. I thought that really hurt her title reign. Why could have Michael Nakasaki as her corner, as a manager? In her every match instead of her on her own. You know, I rather have Riho. For me personally, I, I want to see Riho dropping the belt at the next pay per view. You know, I think Riho's better off chasing after the championship than becoming champion. Why could you did that until until she can speak English instead of like having no champion in the first place? Like, that's for me. You know, so. You can tell there's some uh, friction between uh, Britt Baker and Riho. And then we got the main event. The main event, we got the Elite. Remember, representing the Elite, we got the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega taking on the Lucha Brothers and Pac. This match was, I'm not saying it was a great main event. It was a decent main event. It was fast-paced. Like, 
Pac was basically the MVP of this match. Like at one moment of the match, you like I think he hit the um the black arrow onto I think it was on Kenny Omega. The Young Bucks broke the pin for, and then the end of the like one more the like the end of the match you had um Pac locked in the brutalizer onto Omega. I think like one of the member of the Young Bucks hit him with the super kick in the back of the head. Kenny Omega got the victory. I think it was Pac or one members of the Lucha Brothers. Before you know, yeah, like uh, Omega hit the um the one winged angel to score the victory, and Elite uh, end him end ended this match as victory as victors. So then you had Cody Rhodes come into the ring, and uh, yeah, I think there was conf confrontation between uh the Elite and Hangman Page. They're not really in cahoot. They're not really like, you know, like they're not like in. They're in a, a feud. I think they're like they're, the last few months. They're like teaming with you know like Haman Page was basically collabing with one of the members of the Elite. And that's the end of last week. Last week's Dynamite. I think this week's uh, last week's Dynamite was solid. You know, it's the new decade. It's the new year. They just. Gone, gone off with a bang, you know, with a start. Oh yeah, this week's Dynamite was basically their one year anniversary of the formation of All Elite Wrestling. That'll be another topic for another time. So, anyway, so AEW Dynamite from last week, January the 1st, 2020 was good. Last segments, really good match. The match of the night for me personally has to be the women's four-way match for the AEW women's title. And the second best match of the night has to be Cody versus Darby Allen. So yeah, I I give it I, I for me personally I'm gonna give it about eight or nine out of ten. I give it nine out of ten. Really solid show. So that is my AEW uh dynamite review from January the first, twenty twenty. Hope you like it. Leave the thoughts in the comment section below, smash the like button, and subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube. This is the Central Man officially signing out.